Welcome back to Our Chicago. I'm Tanya Babich. My guests this morning are Selena Roldan, the Regional Chief Executive Officer of the American Red Cross of Illinois, and Dr. Kyle Mack, a pediatric hematologist with Lurie Children's Hospital. Selena, I want to talk to you about the role that the Red Cross has played in helping to better understand the course of the pandemic, when it might have actually started, when it landed in the United States. Uh, we actually discovered that it arrived here earlier than we initially thought because of donations from the Red Cross and some testing that was done after those donations were given. So the Red Cross, again, has been proud to play a critical role in providing critical public health information to any of the entities across um, our country, um, our public health departments, our government and others to make sure that we are trying to do everything we can. We've always played a role historically to do everything we can to keep individuals and communities safe um, and resilient. And so just as we're doing just in the similar regard, um, how we've been collecting doing anti body testing for all of the donations that are currently coming in from people that are donating blood um, as a way of providing an additional uh, metric of, of public health information to individuals as well as to communities and we're committed to continuing to do that. What might you do with blood that tests positive for antibodies in order to use that blood for any kind of therapeutic purpose must the donor have been diagnosed with COVID? So one of uh, the most important things that, that we are doing at this time is also producing convalescent plasma and providing that as a potential treatment to those that are currently fighting COVID-19. So we are testing all whole blood platelet and plasma donations that come in for the antibodies for COVID. And so in that sense, if they are tested, if they do test positive, that can be used to be produced as a convalescent plasma treatment for those that are fighting um, COVID-19. Dr. Mack, the idea of giving the gift of life is, a, is certainly a beautiful one. It is also an abstract one for the vast majority of the population. They want to do something good. They want to roll up their sleeve. They want to donate blood. Um, but you actually get to see the patients who benefit from these donations. Can you help our audience to better understand what that gift of life actually looks like, what it means? Yeah, so this is uh, an important question. Um, I think, you know, our patients are tremendously thankful when they're able to get blood. Think of, think of the parent who's bringing their kid in who's, um, who has cancer and is first diagnosed and is in the emergency room and they've just been told that their child has cancer and their hemoglobin's low and they're going to need a blood transfusion or someone who God forbid, gets into an accident and needs emergent surgery and needs a blood transfusion, or an adult with leukemia who has complications from chemotherapy who needs a blood transfusion. All of these scenarios happen constantly. So there's a constant need for blood. And it turns out that during the winter months, understandably, when it's cold, there's inclement weather, people are um, historically vacating, maybe not now vacating as much. Um, the, the donations tend to go down. And so there's a tremendous need during the winter time, especially um, to uh, encourage donors to donate blood. I've donated blood myself during the pandemic. It's remarkably safe. I've worn my mask. I've had my temperature checked. Um, staff are incredibly careful in maintaining my safety and their safety. Um, the spaces are... Um, separate. There, there's plenty of space between donors. And so um, it's really helpful for patients. I think patients ultimately um, are incredibly appreciative of someone giving of themselves. So Anna, very quickly, let's run down the list of qualifications in order to donate blood and where people can find more information on how to get it. Yes, so the, at the basic requirement, if you are over the age of 17, I mean, some in some states, it's 16 with parental consent, over 110 pounds and you're healthy, um, you can donate blood. And so people can go to uh, redcross.org um, slash blood um, to find out more information. And obviously we're incredibly excited and so grateful to ABC7 for supporting us for the seventh annual Great Chicago um, Red Cross Blood Drive 
drive that will be coming up on January 13th where people can still make appointments, appointments strongly encouraged. We're gonna be in five locations um, in Chicago, Lake Zurich, Orland Park, Schaumburg, and in Munster, Indiana, where people can come out and roll up a sleeve and help save a life. Well, I've been donating since I was a teenager. It's easy to do. And I've got the Red Cross app downloaded on my phone. Thank you both for your time today. We appreciate it. And thank you for all you do. Thank you, Tony, so much. That does it for our Chicago. Thank you for joining us. If you want to donate during the ABC7 Great Chicago Blood Drive, it is coming up January 13th. It runs from 7 a.m. through 7 p.m. And there are five locations. And the Red Cross will have safety protocols in place, of course. To make an appointment, call 1-800-RED-CROSS or visit our website or news app. Hey, if you like that video, be sure to subscribe to our ABC7 Chicago YouTube channel.